Operation Supership got off to a proper start yesterday with our Back to Basics video being launched. And at the end of the first day, I have two comments here. One from Fireship. I think Jeff's on to us. But there's another comment from user YH who asked, how can I have users sign up with a username instead of or with an email address? Being able to create an account on a website without providing an email address or phone number or way of identifying you is something that appeals to me. There's just something about the ethos of a Wild West internet that does it for me, I guess. So naturally I leapt into action to create a demo for a user being able to sign up and log in without providing an email and still take advantage of the built-in in Supabase authentication system. So let's take a look. To start, we're going to want to add a new table to our public schema, we'll call it usernames. And for the primary key, we're actually going to use the user ID and we'll create a forward key here to the users table of the auth schema at the ID field. Next, we want to add a username as the second column. We could add a unique constraint to this column, but we're gonna skip that for this tutorial. Next, we're going to want to add an RLS policy to our new usernames table. For the signup process, we'll want to make sure that only the logged in user can create a row for themselves and not for anyone else. And then as a last step on the dashboard, we'll want to go to our auth providers and go into email and you'll want to make sure that confirm email and secure email change are turned off. Now that everything on Superbase is configured for our new login with username hack, we're gonna finish implementing this hack on the front end. So if you take a look at the code here, we now see there's a button for signing up with username and password and then signing in with username and password. Uh, be sure to check our other video if you wanna see how you can set things up to sign in with Google. I've set up some quick functionality in templating to create a username and password form for when you want to sign up and sign in. Be sure to check out the source code in the link in the description as we'll be glossing over much of that. The important piece of the new code is the signup function, which is going to create a fake email for our user that our users will actually never really know about. We're really just creating it so that we can send it across the Supabase client as our client needs an email. Once the user has been created, then we're going to insert into our usernames the username for our new user's user ID. Now because our UI was expecting user metadata based on a Google user, the UI for the username and their avatar image is broken. But we can see if we look at the application tab that we do have our auth token and we do have our UID. So we are effectively logged in at this point. We're creating a hack essentially to let us log into Supabase using a username whereby a user gives us a username and password. Our web app then will create a random email and then we'll create a user from that email and the password with the Supabase client. And then we'll add the username provided by the user initially to the usernames table and link that to the user's ID. Things get a little trickier though once the user has already created their account and they're trying to sign back in given their username and password. So in this situation, the web app is going to need to get the email from the username somehow so we can use that fake email and the given password with the Supabase client so that our users can log back in. So the tricky part here is just how our web app is going to get the email from the username. And for this, we're going to use the Supabase client but logged in with a service role key, which essentially works as an admin client encapsulated inside of an edge function. So as we can see, we're going to create our function with the Supabase CLI. So let's do that now. I'm going to hit NPX and then paste in that command, but we're going to call it get fake email. All that did for now is create that inside of our project here at Supabase slash function slash get fake email. We can see the boilerplate that was generated for us. Note that this is using Dino, but to get started, I am going to first import our create client from the Supabase JS client. We'll also drop in these cores headers and we'll use them now to handle any option requests that's coming from our browsers. So this will be able to handle any pre-flight requests coming from the browsers so that we'll avoid any course issues. Next, we're going to have our web app send over our username inside of our request body. So we'll parse that out. Then we'll create a Supabase client in the context of our edge function. Notice that we're giving it the Supabase service role key here. This string is actually pre-populated in the Dino environment by 
Superbase for us, as well as the Superbase URL. But be sure to never expose this service role key anywhere inside of your front end application, as if that gets out, you will essentially lose control of your database. Once we have our client, we're then going to get from our usernames table a record where the username field matches the provided username from the web client. If there are no matches, we'll throw an error here. This will end up throwing a 500. Uh, ideally, you'd probably want to throw a 401 here, but that's all right. Then we're going to call on the superbase client.auth.admin property. Notice that this is only available here because we are using the service role key and we're going to get user by ID based off the user ID we got from our usernames table. And finally we'll send back a response with just the email. Next we'll open a terminal and we'll run npx superbase login. This will prompt us to get an access token to generate a new token and then we can run the command npx superbase functions deploy get a email. This is going to ask us for our project reference. So we'll paste it in and our function is now deployed. All right, last step, we're going to look at the sign in function that will call from our front end code when a user tries to sign back into their account. We're going to take the client and we're going to call invoke on functions, pass it the name of our function. Remember that was get fake email. And inside the body, we're going to give the username as provided from this form field. Once we have the email that's going to come in from the response, we're then just going to sign in with password using the provided email and the password. And as we can see, we are now able to log in with that user. So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. You've just completed the Superbase username login hack. Now I don't necessarily recommend actually doing this in production, but it's interesting to see that we could. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. There's enough jank in trying to chain network requests together on the client side that I would generally not recommend this, and that's not even to mention any of the other unforeseen issues you'll hit, given that Superbase really isn't intended to support a username-only login. So you've been warned. That is one big pile of shit. If you learned something, please like and subscribe. And check out the Superbase Basics video we posted earlier this week. We'll see you next time.